wildlife photography in Alaska. Canon lent us their latest gear and we took it to Alaska. If you're a wildlife, nature, or landscape photographer, going to Alaska to photograph bears, whales, and its majestic scenery is probably on your bucket list. It was definitely on mine. The Sammy's video production team and I just got back from a trip to Juneau, Alaska to see how Canon's latest gear performed for both stills and video. If you're interested in learning a little bit of the who, what, when, where, and why of Alaskan wildlife and landscape photography, then you're going to be happy you found this video. When I think of going to Alaska, one of the first things I think of is that most people who visit Alaska go on a cruise. That's not what I had in mind and I wanted to get out there without a whole lot of people around me so I could just capture some of the beautiful wildlife photography. I reached out to Heather Holt Keisel. Heather was born and raised in Alaska. She runs private wildlife photography workshops out of Juneau and organized our entire experience, including where we were going to shoot and how we were going to get there. The only thing we had to do was get our gear together. Our complete camera gear kit for this trip fit in two airport approved SKB cases and two mid-sized camera backpacks. I have to give it to Canon, they make some remarkable cameras and lenses. All the gear we chose worked great and we got some awesome shots to prove it. Now let's talk about gear for a little bit. For the still side of things, we brought the Canon EOS R5. The features of this camera that I knew would be important for us were A, dual memory card slots for memory redundancy, good weather sealing because it's Alaska and we might get wet, and great battery life. The Canon R5 checked every single one of those boxes and needless to say, we had full confidence that this camera would perform great on our trip. Now on the video side, as much as I would love to be rocking two C500s, I had to come to the realization that I didn't really know what type of terrain to expect on our trip, uh, but I knew there was gonna be the opportunity to get really close to the wildlife and it could happen at a moment's notice. I had to pack light if I was gonna travel with two cameras and several lenses. So for our A cam, I went with the Canon EOS C70. It offers a Super 35 dual gain output sensor with 16 stops of dynamic range. Canon was able to pack so much in this EOS R style body. I'd have to say my favorite tool on this camera is the built-in ND filters. This made it so easy to deal with the ever-changing light situation and it was nice not having to swap filters from lens to lens. In the audio department, the C70 features dual mini XLR inputs, allowing me to use a shotgun microphone and a lavalier thanks to the included handle with the microphone mount. The C70 checked all the boxes on our must-have list and performed flawlessly. For our second camera, I decided to go with Canon's latest in photo and video hybrid cameras, the EOS R5C. It too checked all the boxes and I wanted a camera I could use to shoot stills as well. I knew the camera was designed for just this type of situation. With the flip of a single switch on the top of the R5C, I could switch from shooting stills on a standard R5 to recording on a full frame 45 megapixel sensor cinema camera that allows you to record up to 8K 60p internal raw video. Now for our lenses, the selection we primarily went with was zoom lenses and once again, thinking about packing light, the lenses we chose had a lot to do with size and weight. Using zoom lenses would also give us the widest focal range. So our lens kit consisted of four RF zoom lenses, starting off with our widest lens, the 15 to 35 F 2.8. We also had the 28 to 70 F 2, the 70 to 200 f 2.8 and the 100 to 500 at 4.5 to 7.1 LIS USM lens. Now the only prime lens we took was the RF 800 millimeter f 11 IS STM lens. So without further ado, I want to invite you to sit back and enjoy the best parts of our trip as we capture Alaskan wildlife with some of the best photo and video gear Canon has to offer. Our trip starts in the town of Juneau. Now the thing that struck me first was how clean the air was. 
It was also great seeing eagles flying overhead and the Mendenhall Glacier far off in the distance. We spent a small portion of our trip here, but we did hike out to the base of the glacier and it's definitely a must visit if you ever find yourself in Juneau, Alaska. So from there we went over to Ward Air and got into a small private plane to take us to Huna in Shikagoff Island. Huna is a small village of about 800 people, mostly native Tlingits, and let me tell you guys, we were seeing bears even before we landed. As our plane circled the airstrip area, we could see a bear at the foot of the runway grazing on some foliage. We came back that afternoon once the airship was closed down and captured some footage of our first encounter with a brown bear in Alaska. I noticed the wildlife there was certainly conscious and aware of the people around them, but showed no interest in approaching us. Now this is not to say that wild bears are not dangerous, but being in their presence was extremely amazing and scary all at the same time. We made sure to never get too close, and we always traveled as a pack. While we were out shooting, Heather introduced us to a Huna local and native Alaskan, Elena Elliott. Just after talking to her for a few minutes, we could tell how much passion she had for photography and for her home and wildlife. We had the opportunity to sit down and talk to Elena Elliott about her work. Hi, my name is Elena Elliott. I live in Huna, Alaska, Chichikoff Island, and I photography wildlife, mostly bears. I like to go hang out with bears all the time. So we went down this one road and on top of this rock pit, a, a sow came out and then a boar came out right behind her. And they would mate for a little bit and they would look down at us like, are they still watching? Are they getting our pictures? And then they would go back and then, okay, and we turn on the truck and they would come right back out and start again. And then they would lay down and they rolled around a little. I have so many pictures of that. I mean, I filled up like two SD cards within 40 minutes. So last year, I got over 20 bears at once in one stream. I got to watch a couple fight while well, there's cubs on the side of the set of cubs here and a set of cubs there down the stream and play fight. They were just play fighting. There wasn't any serious blood or anything. And I had at least, I think, eight maybe to 12 bears and some shots just pointing down this beautiful river that gets full of salmon and with the droughts that we've been having last year was just wonderful to see so much fish with the bears just all coming together at once and play fighting instead of just fighting it's really weird to see sows 
with other sows and boars in the river at once. That was pretty amazing for me to see and it was an experience I'll never trade for anything. Be weary when you come here. Pay attention to your surroundings. It is not safe just to walk down the road unless you're armed or in a crowd. I've saved some tourists this season. I was bear watching. I found a group. And I look behind me and I'm looking at this bear in front of me and they're just walking towards me. So just, if you go out the road, get a tour company to take you out there. Find a friend to take you out. This island's full of bears. I don't want the bear shot because you were curious. After spending our first night at the Icy Strait Lodge in town, we met our skipper of our landing craft boat at the Huna Marina. We were on the search for bears feeding off clams along the coastline and whales bubble feeding. Now, although we didn't find any bears, the boat ride turned out to be the perfect place to spot a deer in distress. After bringing it on board, we set it free on land and went about our trip. Now I'd like to think that shortly after that we were rewarded by coming across a family of humpback whales bubble feeding near the coast. I couldn't believe the sheer size of these animals. Thanks to the zoom lens like the 100 to 500 and the 800 millimeter, we were able to get super close to these very elegant creatures and some other surprises along the way. Our final day in Huna had come as we hopped on a seaplane back to Juneau. We picked up our friend Art only to hop back on that same seaplane that would then take us to a remote island in search of more bears. The plane ride there was amazing and landing on water is a surprisingly smooth experience. Not only did I get to see more bears, but I actually had a very close encounter with the first bear we came across at Pack Creek. It felt like he was walking up to me and at one point we locked eyes. Shortly after that he looked away and continued grazing on the grassy path in front of him and I continued to capture the moment on the R5C and 70 to 200. On the R5 we had the 100 to 500 and at one point I brought out the 800 millimeter F11 as two bears began to play fight in the distance. I had an amazing time and I'd like to say Alaska is easily on my top five places I've traveled to. If you enjoy photographing wildlife, then this would be a great place to visit. Now I wanna thank all the people behind the scenes that made this trip happen and a huge thanks to Ward Air for taking us on our trip and Canon for providing some amazing gear. If you guys wanna learn more about the gear we use to make this video, head on over to one of our Southern California retail locations or visit us online at sammys.com. This is gonna bring this story to an end, but I hope you really enjoyed all the great examples we were able to produce with some of the best that Canon cameras have to offer. If you guys like this video, please make sure you give it a like and make sure you subscribe with bell notifications turned on to get notified of when we drop the next video. With that being said, that's gonna do it for us here today. Stay safe and have a good one.